Welcome to Italy, the land of pizza and pasta. This phenomenal country is home to some of the most delicious foods in the world, not to mention a treasure trove of art, culture and people that have mastered the Dolce Vita. Earlier this year we spent a month exploring Italy and munching back on some of the best food we've ever had. In this video I will run you through our highlights and give advice on what you might want to try on your next trip to Italy. We mostly feature restaurants that can offer both meat dishes for myself and good vegetarian options that can satisfy a hungry Logan. Let's get started in the most Italian way imaginable, at a pizzeria. Situated on the edge of Lake Garda is the picturesque old town of Simeone. Here we stumbled on the Pizzeria Scalagheri's. It's a really cute spot we've found, and one of the better value places to eat. I'm getting a calzone. We've ordered a bottle of the Lagana. This is the local white wine grape, and it is sensational. My calzone is here. Look at it, it looks massive. Whoa. Get that whopper. And guys, I can confirm this was the best calzone of my life. <laughs> oh yeah, look at that. Stop. A pocket of joy right here. And into the snout. Mm. Mm. So I went for the four cheeses pizza, or the four formaggi. We have mozzarella, succino, rana padano, and gorgonzola. It's gonna be really good. Given this is a touristic location, you might be surprised to hear the prices were affordable and the quality very high. Full glamour. Views of the castle a definite bonus. Next we head to Milano to explore the trendy Brera district. Full of food markets and boutiques, we challenge ourselves to cook our own Italian meal. We picked up fresh vegetables, cheese, bread and wine from the local stores. And we were pleasantly surprised with the value. Food is cheaper in Italy than in New Zealand. We made orchetti pasta in an egg and pecorino sauce and served it with a caprese salad. We wanted to try the orchetti because they look like little ears. Salute! In Brera, we also sampled some casual food options. Pizza by the Slice was a favourite of ours and made for a super affordable lunch option. Now this is in the style where they cook a big like focaccia style bread with toppings then they cut it up into pieces and you can just buy it takeaway. These two pieces cost about 7 euros in total. Mine has zucchini, a tomato based sauce and it's got olives and some rocket as well. Mm. And I just went for the classic margarita, can't beat it. Andiamo! Mmm, so saucy. They also had some pretty dope lunch spots where you could get a slice of lasagna for not a lot of money. Super good vibes in Milan. Heading over now to Florence, I had possibly my favourite pasta dish here. I've got here fusilli with pork sausage and kale. Um, we've got some salad, we've got some bread of course, and Logan's got some really nice pesto pasta. It's parmesan this. That is a beautiful side. We'll give it a bite. Sometimes it's the simple dishes in Italy that leave you the most shook. Mm. That is really rich and beautiful. Simple, but delicious. Travelling further south now, we stayed a couple of nights in an ancient hilltop village of Monte Giallo, a truly special experience we both will never forget. Here we treated ourselves to a recommendation from the Michelin Guide called Ristorante Daria. If you know anything about Monte Giallo, you will know Daria and her family practically run the town, offering charming accommodation, great food, boutique shopping, not to mention a wealth of locals knowledge that they are willing to share with the guests. Inside Restaurant Italia, the lighting was warm, the ambience on point. The five star service left us feeling like kings for the night. First they brought us out a glass of local sparkling wine and an amouche bouche. These were both gifts from the kitchen and they did not charge us for either. To start, I had a pumpkin soup. Logan had a vegetable souffle, both delicious. To follow, I ordered the white truffle taglatelli and it did not disappoint. The flavour was much more nuanced than other truffle dishes I've had in the past. Very, very tasty. Logan had an elegant risotto that tasted as good as it looked. We finished this meal off with a berry panna cotta, and once again they brought us out another complimentary glass of wine. This time a small sweet wine that washed down the dessert beautifully. The next morning we woke up in an ancient villa overlooking the Tuscan countryside. We had to pinch ourselves to check that this was really our lives. Our generous host prepared for us a Tuscan country breakfast. Fresh pastries, preserves, cheese, meats and fresh fruit. They also made us a fresh batch of scrambled eggs. We can't praise Daria and her team enough. 
add a visit to Monte Kello onto your bucket list. Next up we move to the ocean. The fishing villages of the Cinque Terre have long fascinated us. On an afternoon exploring Monte Rosso, we dropped into a little seaside restaurant. It was a windy, rainy day, so we needed some warming up. I ordered the catch of the day, sea bream. Caught that morning by locals, the sea bream was fresh and tasty. This looks pretty nice. Logan opted for a minestrone soup. I just wanted something warming, comforting, like a big hug. Mm. We also ordered a side of chips because we were extra hungry that day. Of course, when visiting Italy, Rome cannot be skipped. There are four iconic Roman pastas. I'm probably going to butcher this, but I'm going to do my best. Cacio e pepe, carbonara, metricata, and allegrisha. That is not correct. This evening we're in Campo de Fiore and we're heading out to La Cabanara for dinner. Here I ordered the Allegricia. This dish is made from rigatoni pasta, pecorino romano cheese, black pepper and guanciale. This combination of strong tasting ingredients is like a flavour bomb in the mouth. Logan got cacio e pepe, a cheese and pepper cream sauce. But make no mistake, Italians do not use milk or cream when they make these creamy pastas. It's all cheese and starchy pasta water, baby. <laughs> By the time we had left Rome, I had actually tried all four of the Roman pastas. Sadly, I forgot to film more. Last up, we take you to Naples. No trip to Italy is complete without having pizza in Naples. Ideally, in a family-run restaurant for generations. Loud dining rooms, echoing sound from the kitchen, crackling wood fire, filling the room with an intoxicating smell. Prices so small, you do not believe your eyes. Guess the price, four euros. Yeah, I can hardly believe it either. Just come to a restaurant that was established in 1931. I just ordered a margarita pizza, tomato, mozzarella, and a little bit of basil, the color of the Italian flag. Perfection. I ordered the calabrese because I wanted something hearty and with some meat on it. Now, so this is sausage, mushroom, basil, mozzarella cheese, and tomato sauce. Just look at this crust to start with. It's so crispy and aerated. Oh, that is so beautiful. Mmm. Light, crisp, yet soft. Oh, that is to die for. And so the video ends where it started. Scoffing back pizza in a pizzeria. Life is good. Thank you for watching and remember to subscribe to this channel for more food and travel content. Much of this video is made up from footage from our vlogs, so be sure to check them out. Until next time, ciao!